Okay, welcome. My name is Rob Reinert. I'm from Rainbow Studios here in Phoenix. And the purpose of uh, tutorial number one here is to show everyone the basic usage of the Armadillo editor and how to take content into it, uh, create a track from that, save it out, and then run it in Motocross Madness. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details of how we create the content that goes into it. That's going to come in a later tutorial. Uh, this tutorial's purpose is how to take existing content into the editor and uh, create something useful with it. But before we can do that, I need to give you just a cursory understanding of what the terrain engine for Motocross Madness is and how it works. The engine is based on something called a height field. A height field is an evenly spaced grid of points, if you look at it from the top down, that each can have a varying height. Um, and to express the colors in an artistic way in the computer, we use uh, from white to black, where black points represent low value in the height field, and white points represent high values in the, white, in the, in the height field. So uh, if you were to look at what we call a displacement map, which is just a 24-bit image. Here's the one for today's experiment, which is uh, to recreate the Motocross Manus Track WP Zone. On the right here is the actual displacement map for WP Zone. On the left is the perimeter tile that we're going to make tile around the edge of the track so we have nice hills going off into the distance. Now, when uh, Rags originally painted this image a year ago, he probably painted it at a much higher resolution, like about 768, 768, or just whatever, whatever will comfortably fit on your screen at 100% uh, zoom. Uh, you can paint it much higher resolution. Every time you go to export a copy of your displacement map as a 257 by 257 target file, you just uh, scale it to 257, and uh, in Photoshop, uh, click Save a Copy or Save As, and uh, save yourself another copy of the image to go into the editor to be displaced. Now, when you displace, you can control the strength of how tall you want black to white to be. For example, if you set a displacement strength of 10, uh, from the lowest point to the highest point in your in your database, um, it's only going to be a 10 elevation difference. But if you take the exact same map that you displaced at 10 and displace it at 50, then black in your map is going to be 0 feet high and pure white in your map are going to be 50 feet high. So the displacement strength uh, controls how tall your stuff gets projected. Let's fire up uh, Armadillo Editor now and bring in these displacement maps and actually rebuild WP Zone. Okay, here we are coming into the editor. So we'll create a brand new Nationals track. Takes it just a few seconds to uh, create about 6 million polygons with the geometry and set up the normals. After creating your project, uh, you're initially dumped here on the Edit Displacement Paint interface. Um, now we have to admit our paint interface is not very strong. You couldn't possibly uh, recreate all the tools that you'll find in popular paint programs like PaintShop Pro or Photoshop or any other outstanding paint programs out there. So what we really intend for you to do is uh, paint your displacement maps in applications like Photoshop or PaintShop Pro and then merely import your target height maps into the, into the editor to be displaced into 3D. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring in the center part of the terrain. So uh, we want to look at the track itself, so you click View Track, import your target height map, and let's switch to my temp folder. I have those uh, 257 by 257 height fields, WP Zone, Open, uh, switch the perimeter, which is still black, so we can brought anything in, hit the Import button, and uh, Import Perimeter 257. Now you see we can switch back and forth between the tracks and the perimeter. So now that we've brought them both in, uh, the displacement strength that I was talking about earlier is what controls how many feet tall your terrain is going to get displaced. I happen to know that WP Zone is about a 65, so I'll click 65, hit one of the other four tabs across the top of the screen, and uh, that causes the editor going to, to go to the 3D view, which then causes it to have to recalculate all of the normals and everything about the terrain so that the bike will ride on it properly at this new scale. So that takes about 10 seconds on most computers. Now that we're dumped into the 3D view, uh, let me take a moment to explain the view controls. Uh, you can hit the 2 or the 3 on your keyboard to take you between a 2D top-down view and 3 will take you into a 3D view. Uh, you can fly the camera around using the left side of the keyboard. The A and the D keys will pan you side to side. The W and S keys uh, pan you forward and back, and the Q and E keys will pan you up and down. So with these uh, 
keys, you can just move around in the database. If you press the tab key over on the left side of the keyboard, that turns on the mouse look camera, which uh, you first person shooter guys will immediately appreciate. You can use the mouse to look around. While you're doing that, you can still use flight control. So I can hold down W and just kind of fly the mouse around. If you hold down Shift while doing any of the view control, they'll go twice as fast. So holding down Shift W or Shift D, Shift A, and uh, Q and E to make you go up and down real slow. If you don't hold the shift key down, it just translates at the normal speed. So uh, right click brings you out of mouse look mode. This icon down here is mouse look, but I enjoy using keyboard along with the mouse. So uh, you can either click here to put yourself in mouse look mode, right click to cancel, or just hit the tab key anytime you're in 3D view. You can immediately start flying the camera around. Okay, now that we've got our terrain in, uh, I've also pre-created the texture map that I want to be on our terrain, so let's go ahead and import that. This is the material tab. There's two ways you can have the editor create a terrain. You can either click auto-generate and use these controls in this area to define what your track looks like on the track, off the track, and on the edge of the track. You hit apply and it will automatically generate a texture for you. But in order to create an automatically generated texture, you already have to have created a spline. Otherwise, the editor doesn't know what part of your track is on the track and is off the track. So for our purposes, let's click the custom button, which enables this bottom section here. Uh, we can bring in our own texture for the track and for the perimeter, which we'll do now. So I bring in the WP zone texture. It takes it just a few seconds to load that up, apply it to the terrain, and bring in the perimeter texture edge tile. Now I'm not going to go into the detail on how I create these textures today. It's beyond the scope of this lesson. This lesson is just to familiarize you with the basic controls in the editor, uh, what the steps are involved in creating a track. So now that I've got my textures, I can hit 2 to go to the 2D view. I can still pan while in the 2D view here. I pan and I can zoom in and out. So uh, the next step is to go ahead and create my spline. So click on the spline tab, the top, uh, you can control the width of each no node that's placed out on the track. Um, this is about probably a 55 wide track. And you can control how high above the terrain you want the spline to be placed. Um, that doesn't affect it in racing, it just affects how you view it in the editor. If you have extremely hilly terrain, put very few points out there, sometimes it's handy to have the, uh, the spline more than two feet above the track, or the spline tends to disappear under the track where it's extremely hilly. But the more points you put out there, the less you'll have that kind of a problem. So we'll click Add Node, um, start where we want the start finish to be, and begin clicking out our spline. You want to put about three points on every corner, and at least two or three points along every straight section, so that you'll have plenty of control later to go back and edit your spline adequately. Okay, I've jumped ahead here. Um, I took a few minutes and I finished clicking out my initial spline. Uh, what I didn't show you was uh, I started it out right here. We clicked around and I got just before I wanted it to finish. Uh, then the next thing you click is Close Path and it automatically uh, seals off the circuit and makes a complete loop out of it. Um, once you've done that, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit on the left side. You can then click a node to highlight it and click Place Gate and uh, it will put the start finish gate right there at that node. So let's put it back where I want it. Okay, the start finish gate is now in place. Uh, to edit any part of the spline, let's zoom in here so you all can see good. You can see the center line and the outside edges uh, are made up of a point each. If I click on any center point, it selects that entire node. I can hold the control key down down while click dragging on the middle and I can move uh, move those three points to, around together. If I singularly click on something without holding down control, it'll just move that point. So I can click here and click here. Um, if I go to any particular section, click on the center and hold down the shift key, when I uh, click and drag up and down, it'll automatically scale that segment of the spline in and out. So I can let go of shift, just click on this single point and move it. Once again, hold down control and uh, all the points will move together at that node. So let's zoom back out. I've got a pretty good spline here. Um, you really want to be careful, uh, obviously, at all your takeoff points to make sure the spline is plenty narrow enough. Uh, now remember I said earlier about the hilly train, the spline's going under there, so if you hold down this, let's raise the spline up until you can see it. But uh, with, it, with the spline 20 feet above the track, it's very deceptive where your spline is once you're down test driving on the track. 
So before you test drive, you want to have that back down to about one or two feet above the terrain. The next thing we can do is test drive our bike. Uh, let's go ahead and click the test drive icon up here. This is the human test drive, and that's the AI test drive button. So let's get our bike on the ground here and uh, get our bearings. Start finish line is right over here. So pull the camera back down and uh, go for a quick test drive. There's no sounds, no stunts, and also you'll notice that the uh, the texture doesn't look on the ground anything like it does in Motocross Madness. Uh, terrain editor does not use the multi-pass texture features of the game, um, allowing uh, allowing it to look a lot better. So uh, we're doing a terrible job of driving here. Uh, this looks like a pretty good recreation of uh, everybody's favorite WP zone. So we've got our spline ready to go. We've got our textures laid on there. Um, let's just take a minute and. Uh, let the AI test drive at once. Click this button. The AI starts out in the center of the track. He heads toward the start-finish line where he'll turn and start actually following the track. Now, a very important point is that uh, we allowed you to tune the center line part of the spline. You'll see that the AI follows along the red line on the center of the spline here. Now, he doesn't always follow it perfectly. What you have to do is uh, go around, watch, go around the track, watching the AI, and edit the red center line part of the track. As you move that section, that will refine how he approaches every jump. So, you know, if somebody's going too wide or they're hitting a bump and flying off the track in a way you don't want the AI to, just take the time to tune the red center line and. Uh, after enough practice, you'll, you'll understand kind of how the AI looks at cornering and jumps and things like that. And uh, you can tune them so that the tracks that you put out will not only be a good multiplayer experience, but um, you can see our boy flying off just a bit there, um, but they'll be a good single player experience. Um, you can get a lot of, a lot of people want to play your track single player, but if you don't take the time to tune the AI properly, um, it's not going to be nearly as fun as it can be for them. Um, let's go ahead just for a second and put a automatically generated set of textures on the terrain once. Um, let's go to the 2D view, zoom way up, and um, I'll explain the auto-generate features of the textures. Now, the auto-generate feature will not work until you've already got a spline assigned to the track. Otherwise, the editor, ed the editor does not know what part of your track is on the track, what's off the track, and which part is the edge of the track. So we've provided you a number of 480 by 480 24-bit resolution targets. You can create your own. Uh, make sure they tile on the edges. Put them in the on-track, off-track, and edge-track folders under materials. and. Uh, they'll automatically show all these drop downs. So let's choose on track number one, let's choose off track number four, and edge track number five. Um, feather distance means uh, the distance between on the track, the edge of the track, and off the track, um, how many pixels it bleeds those textures across. Um, it's quite comparable to the feather feature in Photoshop. Um, you can automatically have ruts generated and painted onto the terrain texture for you, and the rut opacity defines uh, the transparency level of them. Zero is completely transparent, and one is completely opaque. So I think uh, seven is probably a pretty good value. Um, Although let's turn them up a bit so you can just see them a bit better. Let's make it 15. Um, cloud seed is a random darkness and lightness pattern that gets applied to the terrain that makes it look a little bit more natural, uh, almost like clouds casting shadows on different parts of the track. Once again, the cloud opacity, 100%, will make very light and dark areas. Um, and the seed is the random number that is used to generate a pattern. So you just change the seed, and you'll get a different pattern every time. So if we click Apply once, the editor will automatically generate the textures for us based on the selections that we've got here, um, and given that we already have a completed spline. Okay, as soon as it finishes, we can go to 3D view, fly the camera back down, have a look around, press the tab key, and uh, see we've got a pretty nice terrain texture going here. Not too bad at all. So uh, now that we've got that going, we can experiment and try other textures. Like, let's change our on track to number three and our off track to number five. Leave the edge track alone. Um, you can see how dark the ruts are showing out. Like, it's hard to tell, but believe it or not, usually until you get about seven to ten percent, it looks too dark once you get into the game. So we'll try ten percent. Click the apply button again. Take just a few seconds to uh, have the updated texture on the terrain. All right. Once it finishes, once again, the tab key. Just have a look around. Just down close to the deck here. Now let's go ahead and uh, put a couple objects out in our scene. Let me fly the camera up real high. Find the start finish here. 
and let's fly over there. And let's put a couple of objects right by the start finish. Okay, we got a nice view of it. Fly the camera up a little. Here we go. Click the objects tab. Pick the category we want, and we'll go to billboards and bales. Put some a uh, couple of billboards out there. Uh, you can scroll through the list, pick a sign that you want, click place object, and uh, click out in the world where you want it to show up. It'll automatically uh, snap it to that spot on the terrain. So let's put a second one there. Look at the camera over to this side. Pick this one, and let's put two of those right there. Okay, now let's move them around and get them oriented just where we want them. Uh, move camera over, hit tab, get our mouse whip going, dolly in a little. Okay, now to edit them, uh, select an object, click move, and uh, put the object exactly where you want it. Select this one, move, move it over here. Now you can use shortcut keys for move and rotate. Move is F5 function key, and rotate is the F6 function key. So you can right click to cancel a mode, select an object, tap F6, and uh, immediately rotate it around the Y axis. You can see Y is being locked down here. The X and the Z buttons are up, so Y is by default uh, the first rotation axis, which most coincidentally is the axis about which you want to rotate most of the time anyway. So get these positioned. If you want to move something up and down, uh, you can. You notice how it automatically hugs the terrain as so we move the object around. Once you get it where you want it in X and Z, you can move it up and down by using the plus minus keys on the keyboard. That'll move an object directly up and down so you can get it right at the height you want it to be. Let's get the camera out here and take it down more from a riding perspective. Click on this object, F6, rotate it in a little, F5, hit plus, move it up a little bit, select that, F5, move it up a little more, F6, rotate it in a little more. That looks good. Okay, well, let's fly over and uh, Get these signs going. Select that one, F5, plus F6. Get it rotated in a little. Right click, select it, F6, rotate it, bring it in, F5, plus plus. Right click to cancel the mode, and uh, move back out. And we get a couple signs placed ready to go. Um, let's go ahead and put the thing sign out there. Oops, scroll all the way from the list. that right there. Right click the cancel place mode, click on it, F6, rotate it in, fly over there a bit, and uh, F5, let's move it down just a bit, and there we go. So you can place objects from any category you want, put as many objects as you like out there. I strongly encourage people to uh, use things like signs and hay bales uh, right on the leading face of your jumps. Put things on the outsides of your jumps so that cutters can't uh, cut that jump and uh, get times you don't want to get on the track. But that's just about it. Lastly, let's uh, stick some trees out there. Click on the environment tab. Um, and let's actually start with our sky. Look up at the sky a bit. If the sky you want, drop it down. Uh, let's try Terra 11. Nope. A little sunset, too bright. Okay, Terra 12 looks like a nice one. Get that sky going. Let's uh, set up our lighting. I like having the sun at about 150, 150, 135. Uh, that makes the primary light just a little bit yellow. Set the uh, ambience at about 80. And uh, drop this down. We've got uh, different types of ecosystems you can select from. We'll pick forest. I'd like 25,000 trees. Put that in and click the Generate Trees button. So um, in a later tutorial, I'll explain how to go about editing the EST files that make up uh, where the ecosystems come from. But for now, you guys can just click on uh, the default settings. And uh, if we go down low, like the perspective when we're driving around, from this point of view, it looks pretty good. We've got all our textures out there, plenty of nice trees. Raise the camera up. You can see we got lots of them out there. Almost too many. Let's uh, knock it down to 20,000 and uh, generate those trees again. Okay. So lastly, let's put my custom texture back on the terrain to 
WP zone and the perimeter edge tile. There we go. So uh, we started by importing our displacement map. We made the spline on the track. We brought our custom textures in and I explained how to make textures automatically. We placed a few objects out in the scene and then we moved and rotated them into position. Uh, we picked the settings we wanted for the ecosystem, the sky, set up our lighting. So um, let's go ahead and save our project. And click the bundle button, which is the very last step. Takes all the raw resources that take that makes up your project, compiles them into one file so that people can't uh, mess with your track, copies it into the correct folder, and you should be ready to run your track. So uh, that concludes this lesson.